समस्त जन कल्याणी निरत करुणामय नमा जिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर ओ वसुदेव सुत देव कंस चाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंद कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु सो टुडे वी बिगिन वर्स थर्टी सेवन एंड लास्ट टाइम वी हैड डन दिस वे अर्जुना आस्क अ वेरी वेरी इम्पर्टिनेंट क्वेश्चन एंड द क्वेश्चन इज दैट बाय वॉट इम्पेल्ड does man commit sin do against his wishes o varshnya constrained as it were by force now see this is very relevant to us because we all do wrong things once in a while and when we do it the force propelling us to do it is so forceful that you are almost dragged to do what you are doing even though intellectually you know and you understand that this should not be done but you still do it so then he is asking this question that then how how come this happens so the lord replies shri bhagavan uvacha काम एष क्रोध एष रजो गुण समुद्भव महाशनो महापापमा विद्येनम इह वेरिणम ही पिन पॉइंट्स एग्जैक्टली टू थिंग्स ही सेज काम एष क्रोध एष रजो गुण समुद्भव समुद्भव मीन्स बॉर्न आउट ऑफ born out of rajoguna the forces that impel you very strongly to do wrong things is kaam and krodh hmm? and he calls them mahashanu mahapapma that they are very sinful both these things are sinful na huh? kaam and krodh are very sinful and mahashanu mahashanu means that which can never be satisfied kaam is always depicted as mahashan that means that no matter how much you feed it it will always ask for more so mahashano mahapapma vidyenam eh eh verenam that means understand these two to be the enemies to be the enemies now see i'll read the translation it is desire it is anger born of the activity all devouring all sinful know this as the foe here in this world so the these two are the big enemies kaam and krodh ab ye to say it in hindi you know krodh is a anugami vritti anugami vritti means one that follows something it doesn't come on its own you don't get angry for nothing right if someone is angry it means there has to be a cause for that anger and the cause is karma so it invariably follows karma karma means desire and desire of any sort now here he says that the desires are born of the activity anything that you want to do anything that you are desirous of doing and you are desirous of doing it very very strongly that is called kama hmm? now unfulfilled desire you know when it is unfulfilled so the thing that molests the desire to be unfulfilled is the one that causes the anger your desire gets deflected as anger on the 
hurdle that comes in your way when you desire something so it is actually now here see it says desire it is desire it is wrath hmm? just keep these two things in mind he calls them enemies he calls them enemies now if desire is not fulfilled it immediately putrefies into anger straight away you notice it about yourself or about anybody else that when the desire is not fulfilled it putrefies into anger instantly a child who wants a toy and you take away that snatch away that toy from his hand then watch the child doesn't he instantly start crying loudly he does he is complaining that is his anger he is showing his anger by taking it anything that you desire strongly if it is not done if it is not fulfilled wo immediately of course it will happen and that is the satan desire anger emotion is called satan over here it is called shaitan as i told you it is called mara in buddhism and here that is what it is it is a strong form of maya that captivates you and at that time when anger comes you know you had seen the ladder of fall in the second chapter so when anger comes then delusion results and delusion means you do not know what you are saying you do not know to whom you are saying you do not know what you are doing and you do not you forget yourself also so when you forget yourself you forget your relationships with everybody and anybody else so the gurudev used to say that the children of desire and anger is sin and sins are many that's why i use plural children there are many many so when a person is angry he can shout he can scream he can use abusive language he can hit he can kill so all these things that happen when you are angry are called children of the sin or and the sin is anger desire and anger now uh, see how it happens is you are very much interested in an old car want to buy it second hand hmm? and you have fixed a deal say you have fixed a deal of 5 lakhs for that car you happen to tell your friend huh? and you tell him that this is it and i'm getting it so cheap and it's a very good car and only 5 lakhs and i have already settled and everything so he asks you where did you settle with whom did you settle and you happen to tell him because he is your friend now he undercuts you by paying another 50000 to that person who was selling the car and he buys that car from that man doesn't anger arise in you straight away anger vengeance desire to harm and all that will suddenly flood your mind so this kind of a thing you know anger exists in everybody but it does not come in on its own it has to come when desire is circumvented and when desire is thwarted by anybody then the anger arises so knowing this now then also understand one thing he talks of it as two huh? desire it is desire it is wrath so were they two things truly speaking they are one and the same as i told you that desire putrefies into wrath it turns into wrath and therefore you know it is like this like gurudev gave the example that in south india they have a beautiful name venkat subramaniam hmm? and then he says the same person in north india becomes subbu but the person is the same now that person when he goes to america he becomes su so he said ki this is how but the person is the same you know and so anger and understand that anger and desire is the same so when someone is getting angry always try to go to the root try to see why is this person behaving like this 
why is this person getting angry and when you come to the root you will immediately understand why it is happening so anger is not for nothing come to the next verse dhume dhume avriyate vahin yathadarsho malena cha yathol benavrato garbah tathate nedamavritam now he gives three different examples the lord is giving three different examples and these three examples are at the body mind and intellect level i'll read the translation as fire is enveloped by smoke this is one as a mirror enveloped by dust this is two and an embryo is enveloped by the womb so this is enveloped by that now here two pronouns are used huh it is saying that this is enveloped by that now he is not specifying what is enveloped by what he says this is enveloped by that so we will come to it later but uh, having understood that desire and anger is one he says what does it do as fire is enveloped by smoke dekho when the mind is at play and it divorces itself from the intellect the intellect is the discretionary and rational power of the mind now the mind is instinctual totally when the mind leaves the intellect it discards the intellect and runs towards doing whatever it feels like doing okay then it is called the mind and such a person is called a ayukta purush ayukta purush means a disintegrated personality that means his mind thinks something else his intellect thinks something else that is the question of arjun that even when your intellect knows that i am doing wrong why does the mind force you to do something wrong that was the question so he says that when a person does this he is an ayukta purush when your mind is under the sway of the intellect it understands logically what is wrong and right and does what is right that person is called sanyukta purush that sanyukta purush means an integrated personality when you commit sin always your intellect you know will always criticize you and always tell you look what you did this is not right this is not the way to behave you should not have said this you should not have said that so when the intellect is saying all this and you feel guilty about it that is sin that is sin but if the intellect is congratulating you if the action is a self congratulatory act then it is punya understand that very easy to discriminate ke whether i have done a punya or a papa punya will always flood your mind with joy and papa will always flood your mind with guilt it happens automatically so here now this is what satan the picture of the satan is you know that he has got a tail with an arrow pointed arrow and in front of his head there is a trishul and that trishul is sattva rajas and tamas in the body mind and intellect equipment which also harasses you which also pokes you and troubles you hmm? so these three things are what the, these pokings are the things that happen in hell you know the pictures of hell that you have in puranas and other other literature uh, scriptural literature all over the world has this picture of hell and also of satan hmm. now see let us take up these three examples first example as fire is enveloped by smoke this example is of satvic desires now satvic desires are for divine perfection for godliness for noble qualities you want 
that i should be able to do good in the work uh, in the world hmm? i should be a noble human being i should be spiritually high these are also desires huh? don't forget these are also all desires now when there is a hurdle in these don't you get angry see you want to go to a satsang it's a it's a satvik desire right but when there are disturbances maybe from the family people are not allowing you to go people are not allowing you to work for that satvik desire then anger comes up so that is one now that is a satvik desire second is the rajasik desire rajasik desire are for running out i want to buy this i want to get this for achieving power for achieving wealth for achieving name fame all these are rajasik desires and in those when some hurdle comes some obstruction comes then anger that is rajasik anger you want to almost kill that person who comes in in that then there are the tamasik ones the tamasik ones are generally absolutely totally flesh oriented desires sensuous desires are called tamasik desires you want to sleep you want to drink you want to eat you want to um, uh, you know the hunger of one body for another body you know all all these are sensuous desires and they all come under tamasik so when they come under tamasik then that is the grossest form of desire and any obstruction in that can cause anger to be very very violent very violent you have heard of cases when a boy desires a girl and she says no to him and he goes and kills her you've read in the papers na many times these kind of incidents what are these this is this only tamasik desire putrifying into intense anger intense anger so that is what is called uh, now these three also look at the beautiful examples he gives they are really very beautiful the satvik desires he says are like smoke on fire so you see you can still see little bit of the fire from the smoke isn't it so little bit of divinity is visible in satvik desire even in satvik anger the little bit of divinity is visible and satvik desire and anger can be removed even by a whiff of the wind you know how smoke goes you blow onto the fire and smoke is gone isn't it so if there is a little bit of a strong breeze the it will take away the smoke and you will see the fire so this desire goes away with even a little bit of effort and the anger also goes away with a little bit of effort also remember that divinity is still slightly visible through the smoke the second one the mirror represents rajasik desires now the mirror when it has dust collected dust on it an old mirror with lot of dust on it you can see yourself but very very mild you cannot recognize it probably you can see it like a shadow only right so divinity is divinity is visible only like very very like you cannot even recognize that this is divinity reflecting also the mirror if you blow on it it will not get clean there is a strong wind the mirror will not get clean so you have to take a wet cloth in your hand and scrub and scrub and scrub so self effort is required to clean the mirror so for rajasik desires to go quite a bit of effort is required okay now the third one the third one is the embryo that is the fetus in the womb now today you can see the fetus through uh, ultrasound and all that those days when this was given out by the lord there was no ultrasound and there was no way that you could see the fetus in the womb it is covered no amount of scrubbing or rubbing hmm, with mo clean or whatever all detergents you have will not allow you to see the fetus so 
he used to say you have to wait for 9 months to see the fetus come out as a baby and it is the covering on the womb is not one it is it has many coverings ha huh? the uterus the stomach the this the that to so, the skin so it is so hugely covered that you can see no divinity at all see what beautiful examples he is given a very mild covering a slightly more covered thing and then a totally dense covering which is the thing so here you see that this is what it so then um, these three we have done now uh, okay we have finished this hmm? so the veiling is totally complete in the tamasic in the rajasic it is mild in the sattvic it is very very mild and flimsy and therefore it can be it can gone it can be gone but understand that all three whether you are sattvic rajas or tamasic you will have desires desires will be super divine or desires will be rajasic or desires will be very dense and low and sensuous that is tamasic desires so those three you have and we all come into these categories that is why you have often heard na that you to attend geeta classes still you behave like this <laughs> you behave like this i mean you have not become a saint you behave like that because you are trying you are trying to overcome those desires of yours with whichever kind they fall into but your anger comes up still because when the desire is thwarted as i told you anger is the anugami vritti it will come it has to come now so when he says so this is covered by it hmm, he uses two pronouns to explain what what is covered by what that he has explained over here hmm. all right now the following stanza you will find an explanation for this as well as for that avritam gyana me tena gyanino nit वैरिणा काम रूपेण कौंतेय दुष्पूरेण नलेन च इट द ट्रांसलेशन सेज एनवलप्ड ओ सन ऑफ कुंती इज विजडम बाय द कॉन्स्टेंट एनिमी ऑफ द वाइज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ डिजायर सो नाउ ही हैज टोल्ड यू द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ दिस एंड दैट सो वॉट इज कवर्ड विजडम Huh? this is wisdom covered by that covered by desire okay so now you understand this and that what those two pronouns mean now over here it is uh, it says that anger desire lust they are all one force they are one and the same force and they are screened away because of your own greed because of your insatiable thirst for this that and the other also understand very clearly that karma can never never be satisfied krishna has said it again and again gurudev used to say it again and again in the mahabharat you have people saying the same thing that anger is a maha ashan theek hai and he uses the word konte over here konte is a loving term that krishna used to use for arjuna whenever he wanted to talk to him lovingly whenever he whenever he wanted to say look you are my friend you are my relative and not only that you are that great kunti son whom i revere so much and love so much and so i will never never tell you anything that is wrong so krishna is here very lovingly advising arjuna that the force that you are asking the question that you had asked is this question that what is that great force and that great force is can be termed as desire it can be termed as lust it can be termed as very very strong hunger for sensuous objects it can also be termed as anger because of which you do sin so you commit sin it's a ladder 
calm turning into anger, anger turning into sin. Because it forces you to say wrong things, it forces you to do wrong things, it forces you even to kill, even to commit sins. Anger can force you. So, uh, now then it is this, that you want to know that where does this calm reside? Because see, if calm is the enemy, calm is enemy number one. Desire, enemy number one. Uncontrolled desire, enemy number one. So you, when you want to destroy an enemy, the first thing that any com army commander asks is find out the location of the enemy. Find out where the enemy is. Because once you find out where the enemy is, you can kill the enemy. You can bomb that particular site where the enemy has his camp, isn't it? So, the question asked over here that, you know, what is the seat of desire? Where does it come from? Where does it reside? Where it is its headquarters? Because then it will be easy to kill it. Now, this is the answer. Indriyani mano buddhi asyadhishthano muchyate eter vimohayat he says, the senses, the mind and the intellect are said to be its seat. Through these, it deludes the embodied by veiling his wisdom. Now, uh, Gurudev used to give this example of Sher Ali Khan. Now, Sher Ali Khan or Ismail Khan or whatever you, you know, he is the, he is the enemy. He is the gang, head of the gang. Huh? Now, of how does he operate? From where does he operate? He has three headquarters. See, anybody who is into wrong doings or into crime cannot be in one place. If he is in one place, very soon the police will discover his hideout and he will be caught. So he has many, many headquarters where he operates from. So if he, if the police is coming to one place, he immediately migrates and runs off to the other place. If that is also found out by the police, then he goes to the third place and the fourth place. Some of them, we, don't we all know it, they commit crimes in India and they run off to Dubai. So the headquarters is in Dubai. Sometimes the headquarters is in Singapore. Sometimes the headquarters is in Hong Kong. So <clears throat> they commit the crime here, but they go elsewhere. So the lodging place of this enemy, karma, desire, is these three. Senses, mind, intellect. Now, uh, the, this great looter called the desire... Krishna over here explains the methods that he chooses huh, and how to destroy the intellect, how to destroy the mind and how to destroy, because he works from these places. Now, look. <coughs> it was said that anger, you know, comes first. Uh, sorry, anger. if anger comes, then you must not let that anger possess you. This is a spiritual discipline Gurudev used to advise and I am forwarding it to you that if you even feel a trace of anger coming into you, drink a glass of cold water, he used to say. Leave that place, go away somewhere else. Wait before reacting. Start doing your japa and the anger will subside. Now, knowing the places where this anger resides and where karma resides, the three places he's told you, no? it is senses, mind, intellect. So when you leave that place, the senses get controlled. When you keep quiet, the mind gets controlled. And then the intellect gets slowly, slowly 
is able to reason out why you are getting angry what is the reason and what you can do to uh, to stop that anger otherwise your anger will never be able to be controlled japa mind you and mona these two things try before reacting try both these things close your eyes do first of all become silent then do japa and then think of what you want to say sitting right here where i am sitting today gurudev was sitting here once he was a, a guest in my house and uh, a lady asked him this question that swami ji i get angry at the drop of a hat can you tell me how i can control it the answer gurudev gave was this that first discover where it is coming from okay so right in the morning think of the day and im- imagine all kind of things in the day that will make you angry that can make you angry hmm? number one foremost the maid ringing up and saying today i can't come or that you had an appointment the person cancelled the appointment or that somebody in the family said something to you which hurt you very much and you got angry huh something you had been working towards doesn't get done so like that pinpoint all the little little places that can throw you off balance right in the morning and after that pre warn yourself that if any one of these things happens i will not get angry just make up your mind with determination that if any one of these things happen supposing you you pinpoint four things and you say this 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 four desires hmm? that is the headquarter na? so four desires and the mind intellect hmm? he says the senses mind and intellect any one of them where the desire resides you have to control so make up your mind in the morning and so when that thing actually does happen to make you angry you will notice that since you are pre-warned of it and you have made up your mind about it you are able to hit it right there you will be able to control it right there so th- these are this is what he had said that these things they veil the wisdom of the intellect and you have to be very very careful so first go to the senses look for the desire over there then go to the mind just like the police will chase is smile khan you know first go to one headquarter gurudev used to give it in great detail and he used to say that because he was teaching this at dharamshala in uh, sidbari in himachal he used to say that the ismail khan has got one house in dharamshala another house he has got in pathan kot and the third house he has got in gaggal which is very close to sidbari so first the police goes to gaggal but by that time the fellow has gone to dharamshala so then you hunt at dharamshala by that time the fellow has gone to the third mistress who lives in pathan kot and he goes to her house the police then finds a lead and goes there similarly you have to also trace the desire is it at the sense level is it at the mind level or is it at the intellect level is it tamasik rajasik or satvik and once you are clearly able to trace that desire that where it is coming from at that time you know you can restrain restrain it right there and once you restrain it at its head office you understand that you have caught the enemy once you have caught the enemy you will notice that you are able to totally totally destroy the enemy if you have made up your mind in the morning not to get angry no matter what an anger arises because of your ego senses harbor ego mind and intellect are harbor ego and these are the three places he is naming that these are the three places these are 
the hideouts of the dangerous bandit called desire. Find out what kind of desire it is. And the lowest kind of desire will anger you the most. Understand that. Even sattvic desires anger you. You are doing your meditation. You want your meditation to go very smoothly, very nicely. Suddenly somebody starts talking very loudly. What happens to you? It is an outburst of anger. You come out of your puja room in a temper and shout at that person to keep quiet. All your meditation is gone. It is all gone. Not only that, that you have shouted, but your shouting triggers a whole lot of responses in your own body. Your blood pressure goes up. Hormones are released in your body and those hormones damage your body. They are damaging different parts, different organs of your body. So understand that by getting angry, you have not punished the other, you have punished yourself. And if somebody can make you angry, understand that he has conquered you. It's a very important thing. Think about it. If he is able to make you angry, you have played into his hands. You have played into his hands. So no matter what he does or what he says, try to find how you can solve the problem coolly. But throwing you off balance, if he is able to throw you off balance, he has won over you. He has conquered you. Don't allow yourself to be conquered. And the method is exactly as Gurudev advised that right in the morning, understand that you have to pinpoint, you have to locate from where your anger can arise whether the senses, mind or intellect, any one of these three, the anger will arise. So once you have been pointed, you have pre-warned yourself, you have taken a decision that I will not get angry, it will work out very well. Because at last you are face to face with it. You know where it is. It is hard to hit an enemy when you don't see the enemy, isn't it? Supposing the enemy is invisible. How can you kill it? To most of us, it is invisible. We don't realize that our anger is because of the desire. We take anger to be the problem. That is not the problem. The root of the problem is the desire. So you have to hit at the desire, not at the hurdle. You are hitting at a wrong place. As they say, that you are barking up a wrong tree. So that is what it is. You locate the cause. You lo locate the root. And once you have located the root, take hold of yourself. Don't take hold of the hurdle. Take hold of yourself and notice and see how you will be able to handle that thing. So this is how it is going to be. And we stop here. And next time we will know how to hit at this enemy called desire. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Gurabhyo Namaha Hari Om